tuning in to talk about here on Shaw. My name is John Twig, and as usual, we've got a great guest today. It's Mayor Walter J. Twig. Mr. Mayor, thanks for coming in. Thank you for inviting me. Second visit. Absolutely. The first, the first visit we had was uh, the first time we did talk about, and uh, we had a really a fun time. But there's a lot to talk about, and uh, so I won't get into your personal history and all that. Uh, uh, but I will say, uh, you just had a trip. Tell us about it. We went to China with the Chamber of Commerce. There were 63 of us, and we all paid our own ways, so don't, people don't need to worry about city subsidizing us. And we had eight days in China. Wow. And uh, I was kind of hot and cold on whether I wanted to go or not, but it would have been a huge mistake to not go. To because go of who else was in the uh, group? No, just to see how China has transitioned. Okay. It's, they've gone from uh, revolution and self-destruction 15 to 20 to 30 years ago and more, to extreme materialism and state capitalism. Like it's just, it does not look like a communist country. Yeah. And I know they showed us what they wanted us to see, but there's yeah. an awful lot of stuff they wanted us to see. What's in it for Campbell River that the, the chamber would go? Like where are they, was it a fundraising trip for them or nope. was it really it's, learn and I think it was trade? to find out. There was talk about trying to get a twin city yeah. arrangement going. And the mayor of Powell River, Courtney Cumberland, and Campbell River have all been talking about a twin city. Yeah. I'm not so convinced that there's a city over there that's our size that we could twin to. Yeah. They've got apartment compounds and condominiums that are bigger than us, yeah. <laughs> just in the one building. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's their small cities are enormous. Yeah. I've got a question about China, and it's I'm, I apologize, it's not really Campbell River-ish, but. Uh, who runs China now? Before you answer, it used to be the Communist Party. Now I gather there's a cabal of large f families, and they're prone to corruption. Yeah, they haven't said. I don't know. Yeah. But I know in the news, as we were coming on our way back, the former vice president was arrested for um, corruption, abscond absconding with yeah. $15 billion U.S. Yeah. So there may be corruption, but there's certainly a, motion, a movement yeah. to get rid of it. But you're glad you went, and what's it going to pay off? Uh, I don't I mean for me. Well, not for the city. Uh, I don't think it is. Yeah. I think it's great that people know about it, and yeah. I'd encourage others. They're planning another trip next March again yeah. to have another big group. Yeah. And uh, it, the more people that learn about it, yeah. the better. I mean, BC yeah. exports a lot of material. Well, we could to be China. exporting LNG. We could be exporting right LNG there, and I know the Koreans are interested in LNG as well. Yeah. And so are the Japanese, yeah. but. We and, could and we could be exporting bulk water too. We could be exporting bulk water. The Chinese need a different fuel because air pollution is awful. Yes. When you see a few of the pictures in the newspaper, you'll see some blue sky. Those were chosen pictures yeah. on two windy days. What was it like when you were there? Bad. We had yeah. two days that were you could actually see blue. Wow. Otherwise, it was either gray yeah. or dark. Yeah. And it's our okay. last day there. You could see the sun yeah. through the cloud. Yeah. But that cloud was all pollution. Yeah. Like it was real, yeah. and it burned your eyes. By the end of the day, yeah. your eyes were sore. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of fighting global warming tooth and nail here in BC or Canada because our emissions compared to what everybody else is doing are really small, and right. humans compared to natural are really small. But on the other hand, I'm against pollution, and China is swimming in it. On a bad day, you wouldn't see Quadra Island from Campbell River. Yeah. On a normal day, you wouldn't see Middle Netch. Yeah. On a normal day. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really bad. Yeah. Well, that's, so there's a sort of a ancillary <coughs> benefit to it, the tour is that you get a perspective of what the world's like. If I was picking a Twin City, I would pick a Twin City or try to pick one in northwest Mexico. My wife and I toured the Holy. northwest portion of Mexico in November. Huh. And with, there are cities our size and they need help and it's closer. Yeah. It's within our own continent. and. Yeah those people there could really use some guidance and we could use yeah. some yeah. learning from them. Speaking of Metro Chenu, uh, what happened last night at council with Area D? Area D, so there was a item on the agenda. And I should, pardon me, I, uh, last night for when we're recording this, right. of course. So Tuesday the 15th. So there was an item on the agenda for council had to decide, each member publicly, on whether to proceed with a referendum to an X introduce sewers into area D the to get them part. to join. Yeah, to yeah. into section area one in, or section one and two. It's been divided into two areas, okay. one being closest to Jubilee Parkway, two being farther south. And the, the, the offer to area D has changed sort of as the discussions went on. 
and it's got confusing. Yeah. So it was clarified last night by the consultant, and then each member of council had to decide. And in the end, two councillors or two people in council decided to not proceed, and the rest, the other five, proceed to proceed. Yeah. So councillor Sampson and I voted no, do not proceed, and the rest voted to proceed. So it will proceed to referendum yeah. in about June. And uh, it'll only be the people living in the affected area that are voting, I understand. And the sad part is, is the citizens of Campbell River have the horrible alternate approval process. So they have to go, it's like negative billing. You have to have 10% of the population go sign a form and submit it to City Hall to get it to be blocked. Is this what's going to happen? It's going yep. to be, oh my. Which so I, have, I cannot stand the alternate, alternate approval process. I can appreciate anything. it for a small project, but I mean, this is big and this, uh, could, this will, if it goes ahead, this will cost the city of Campbell River taxpayers about $24 a year each to do what they're doing in Area D. Sorry, that's Which my is fault. not what I would expect to have happen. Yeah. I don't want to pay for sewers in Area D. And that's the ongoing, but what about the cost of just the legal advice, this consultant and uh, uh, It's about a hundred grand. Yeah. That if it fails, it's a hundred grand that went down the sewer, yeah. literally. <laughs> bad, bad, appropriate pun, I guess you could say. So, um, well, uh, I've got a question about that, and I know the answer because I asked it before, but I want to get it on the record. There's two big parcels of land adjacent to the affected area, which are in the part two now of the proposal. Right. And on some maps, they show a city of Campbell River owned but you've told me before we recorded that it's Timberland land. It's and then there's a third parcel owned by Ted Maxwell, who's a former city official. Right. Now those are big prime pieces for redevelopment. Right. And is somebody going to try and make some profit by flipping those? Okay, so to try, council in their, key, when they keep revising the proposal, they've taken those out of the sewer yeah. service area but, to avoid that. But concern. they're in the annex area, are they're they? They're in the annex area, they'll be part of the city, yeah. but they won't be serviced by sewer. So that's uh, that's sort of amalgamation uh, or annexation by stealth. Yeah. That could be a headline in the local that paper, could be. but they don't watch this but show. But anyway, they, that's one of the reasons why they've changed the proposal as they went yeah. along. Yeah. And part of the reason it changed is, is they've been listening, they, certainly the consultant has been listening yeah. to what the area D yeah. people have asked. Yeah. My view is when Area D wants sewers, they can ask us and tell us yeah. in the future. Until then, leave them alone. Now, I also heard last night, and I only caught the very tail end of it, but that there were 17 properties identified that in the distant past had had septic problems. Uh, yeah. So yeah. there was quite a bit of debate on whether. But there how was many of those are still now? I understand maybe five. According to the reps that were speaking from Area D, yeah. everything's been looked after. Yeah. They claim Viha knows of no yeah. issues. Yeah. Who knows? Like, so, so it's really not the crisis that it was five years ago. No, I would suspect not. And yeah. I know Middle Natch, when it first went in, it was bad. Yeah. Like they needed the ditches to drain the land. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of those septic fields probably should never have got approved. Yeah. In the past. Yeah. But a long when time they ago need in a sewers, all they got to do is say hello, and we'll be glad to bring them in. Yeah. But I don't think we should be going after them. Yeah. Okay. I if I was pushing, I'd push the sewer line north, go right to the northern boundary of the city, because huh. development follows sewer and water. Yes. And we got water, certainly to Duncan Bay Road. We don't have it to Race Point yet. Yeah. If we went all the way, pretty soon that whole northern area of town would fill in, yeah. and every lot would have a view. Yeah, and actually, so you don't need to go south for city growth. You can go west. The city boundary goes past Race Point. Yeah. Even though I know the Welcome to Camp River sign is at Duncan Bay Road, yeah. the city goes about three kilometers farther. Oh, really? I saw that sign actually driving home on yep. the weekend. Yes. Um, now, that's a segue to the consultation process, and a process is plural. Uh, there's quite a few going on. Uh, as we're taping, there was one on the zoning bylaw, and there's a number of other consultations, which I don't have at my fingertips here. but. Is that something driven by the bureaucrats or by the politicians, or is it just natural? Or I think it's a combination of the politicians and the bureaucrats to try yeah. to become more people sensitive at City Hall. Yeah, there's Alder Street and yep. uh, the uh, the 3.5 acre site. Yep. Yeah. What can you give <laughs> us a big picture of? Sort of, you know, is this a pre-election thing with all of these consultations? Or? Uh, 
I mean, I'm opposed to both of those projects, but it's yeah. good to have the city in the, visit the input from people. Yeah. I believe that three and a half acres should remain public site, public yeah. property, not developed yeah. into houses and commercial. So you're not against the consultation, you're against no, the... No, uh, the consultation's great, yeah. but we've got to listen to... Part of consultation yeah. isn't talking, it's listening. Yes. Right? And Alder yeah. Street, I think if you fixed Dogwood Street, you wouldn't have to worry about yeah. Alder Street. Yeah. And that's an yeah. issue that's hanging on since before yeah. the last election. So we're going to hold a consultation process so after we're finished I can say you had your opportunity and I did what I want anyway. That's correct. And because they put items on the budget for that, they now feel they have to go and yeah. listen, right? Yeah. But That's kind of like First Nations in the pipeline. I'd north, rather they would maybe consult with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, that's uh, third question down here, but it's a good time for it. And that's sort of like the relations on council. Okay, and, you so know, this vote was 5-2, it's usually 4-3. Right. So our meetings are not, there's no nastiness or anything. We just yeah. vote and think very opposite. Yeah. And so the discussion goes around and around and around, and it's either 4-3 or 5-2. to two. Yeah. Pretty well. Steady. So the mayor doesn't run the city, it's the group of four, to use a polite term. Yep. Pretty well. Yeah. And the city manager. I mean, the city manager is actually the boss. Yeah. So the city manager is your boss, the mayor is the chairman of the board, yeah. and the council is supposed to be the board of directors. Yeah. So the boss is actually the city yeah. manager. He's yeah. our only employee. Everything goes through yeah. the city manager. And if it was a private corporation, you would have been fired two years ago? I would have been. Well, I, I because you're always on no, the No, because the shareholders would have to do it. Oh, okay. Right, because I'm, I right. would be the chairman of the board, yeah. so the shareholders would have to vote me out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the, the crazy thing is Gordon Campbell, when he was premier, also made the mayor the CEO, but he didn't give him any power. Yeah. So you're the chief executive officer, so you're actually an employee of the city, but you have no power. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, now, I think he missed that in his MBA class because he <laughs> forgot how the structure works. Gordon Campbell missed a lot of things. He, he must have skipped that class. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid. His uh, HST was full of holes too. Yep. Um, <laughs> now, uh, after the Area D meeting, well, the item on the agenda last night, uh, a lot of people were outside talking about, while well, there's going to be an election in November, my question is actually, there's provincial legislation might move it to October or even yeah, September? Okay, so this election will be in November. For sure? The next, yes, okay. the next election will be in October. Okay. But the next term, starting this November, is four years. Less a month. Less a month. Yep. Yep, okay. And that'll be my last term. Well, because I believe politicians shouldn't hang around too long. Yeah. I'll have been in seven years. I'll have done as about as much damage as I could do <laughs> without sewering the city completely. <laughs> and I, when you hang on too long, yeah. you, you start to think you own the place. And we don't own the place. I We're just trying to improve it a little bit. I know a guy in Ottawa named Steve. <clears throat> who, yep. Yeah. He's been in too long. <laughs> <laughs> It's, I know you it's shouldn't sad. say that, Walter, because you might be asking for federal grants next month. Yeah, we actually, we, are, we will be. There's yeah. a Build Canada grants we just announced yesterday yeah. to m application time, and we've yeah. got till, Mar till May. Okay. And I got, a f I got a good one I'd like to see pushing yeah. through. And by the way, uh, this is a free political announcement for John Duncan. He does an amazing job of getting grants for the city. And another, t since you mentioned John Duncan, he, uh, he's helped and uh, Wing 19 Air Force Base in Comox, they're going to arrange to have the snowbirds fly by this Thursday oh. between 1.30 and 2.30 oh, nice. at low level. I sent them a letter, we sent them a letter this morning For saying it's okay what, to fly the by. What's uh, They're training out of Comox right now oh, okay. and they offered two different times oh. this Thursday and a future date before May 8th to yeah. fl do a low level flyby. We'll but get they Chaz out there with his cameras and he they can needed the they mayor, can. <laughs> They needed the council's approval to fly Isn't less than a thousand feet. All right. So it should be kind of fun yeah. on Thursday afternoon if it's yeah. not raining. Yeah. Okay, I got a generic uh, question here about reviewing your first term and the successes and failures. But before we get to that, the landscaping and the St. Anne's project and the downtown renewal or whatever, what's your perspective on that now? Still, it looks good. Yeah. Still too narrow. It's, I watched a truck yesterday coming yeah. cr straight across and yeah. he didn't stay within the lines. Yeah. And m from my office, I look straight down St. Anne's and it's yeah. seldom, yeah. Car cars make it, pickup yeah. trucks have a struggle yeah. and delivery trucks, certainly yeah. five ton and bigger, can't do it. Well, I drive there too and uh, my website columnist, Gina, uh, thinks it's too narrow as well. I is it too late to fix? 
it's never too late to fix. Okay. But it's going to be expensive because yeah. we've wasted the money. Yeah. And I gave lots of notice. I gave council and staff three yeah. days short of a month before the curbs were poured yeah. to fix it. I sent them photos of the survey stakes and said, go have a look for yourself. This yeah. thing's too narrow. So and nothing happened in that month. So when we widen it, we can call it the group of four repair. Whatever. Yep. But one <laughs> row of trees, particularly on the yeah. north side, will probably Claire's disappear. Claire's never going to come on my show now. Where we got, where we got two <laughs> rows of trees, like 10 yeah. feet apart, it'll yeah. be end up being one row of tree. Well, it makes so sense. What? Like yeah. you've got enough. Yeah. The other thing is that corner by the Imperial Bank of Commerce, you'll see they even got plates there now, more yeah. steel plates making another change. That'll oh. be the third change <laughs> at that corner. I got to get a picture of that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's sad because I, I really despise wasting money. You ready, Laura? <laughs> St. <laughs> Anne's comes together above and below. Yep. St. Anne's upgrade gets an upgrade. This is the second upgrade. Yep. <laughs> I've got a photographic uh, gallery of all the changes there. Oh, that was over by the, uh, the Seymour properties, yep. but anyway. So when you start to add all the screw-ups that have gone on over the last several years, you Highway 19A, Jubilee Park, or the uh, St. Anne's uh, Alder, Dogwood Street, it's yeah. still, it still yeah. comes up. Yeah. It's not good. Yeah. Like, now, reviewing your first term, what do you feel good about? What do you feel like, darn? Well, the voters decided to have what they're having now. Yeah, which uh, is a, an impasse. An impasse. And yet, things are getting done. Like, when you look at the stuff we actually do, we yeah. do a lot of good things, yeah. but they're generally very small. Yeah. The big stuff, we lock horns on. Yeah. But you know, I used to think the city spent too much on this environmental airy-fairy stuff. But I don't think we spend a lot, and you know, I had Amber Zernheld on here a few weeks ago, and that's good stuff. Yep, but we haven't solved the homeless issue. That yeah. container is leaving at the end of this month, yeah. which is a shame. We yeah. need a solid solution for next fall, and we haven't got the seniors out of the community center. We need them into something that they can call their own. Yes. And there's Quinsome Heights, North Campbell River, and Painter Bark are still being ignored. Yeah. They still have ditches. They yeah. still don't have street lights. They yeah. are missing the basics that Pinecrest yeah. and Willow Point have. My, my cell phone distracted me. Did you mention Campbellton in there? Uh, no, I didn't, but yeah. Campbellton too. It's got, yeah. As long as it's got ditches, it's never gonna be treated equal, yeah. or it will not look like it's being treated like the rest of the city. Yes. Those areas that are not being treated properly yeah. deserve to be brought up to the same level as Pinecrest and Willow Point. Yeah. And the, the 3.8 million for an artificial turf at Rob Ron Field, yeah. that money should go to those areas first. Yeah. That item's got forgotten, but What's it's still hanging. What's the price tag, by the way, on the downtown landscaping? Uh, I mean, for what we've done so far, yeah. it's about $4 million. That's what I, I talked to some of the people doing it. And they, they, you know, I don't know if I had my notes. I've probably lost the notes. But that, that's just for the trees and... And well, they did the sewer and stuff underground, okay. right? They put all the electrical ducts in for future burying all okay. the cables. So the landscaping portion of that is not four million. No, nope. no. Okay. But the whole thing. The whole there was project. a wood stave sewer line under Alder yeah. that needed oh, to come out. Definitely, like, the overall project is good. But uh, like the, you know, those nice little green bushes that they're putting in around there. They're going to grow to huge. Yeah. And eventually, gonna, the other thing yeah. we need to do is the trees on Shoppers Row have to go. Yeah. And they need to be replaced. Yeah. And there's going to be new landscaping around Berwick and around the hotel. And then we got it on St. Anne's. We should just make all the landscape in the same age right down yeah. Shoppers Row. Yeah. The building owners along Shoppers Row are concerned about the damage to their buildings. Yeah. And they're correct. Yeah. Their buildings are being damaged. The sidewalk's being damaged. We should remove the trees, plant new ones, and fix the problem. Yeah. Are you going to be running on that then? Yep. Oh, yeah. But yeah. my thing is still financial. Yeah. We can lower our costs, we can lower our taxes, and then we don't have to shut stuff down. Yeah. This, in, my three okay, years I, as, well, in my three years as mayor, yeah. taxes have gone up 21%. 13.6, 3.9, and 2.9, and the service fees, 21% cumulative to the compounds. That's unacceptable. Yeah. It should have been zero or less. How do you uh, save money? Where do you find cuts? Well, we have a lot of positions that are empty within City Hall that we're taxing yeah. people on. In That's 2012, we had 19 empty positions, yeah. and we taxed people as if they were full. Uh -huh. So in 2012, the year of the big tax increase, there was a $3.7 million surplus. 
the tax increase was two million. Now, in yeah. the economy overall, labor is about two thirds of the GDP. Yep. Uh, is that about the same in the yep. city? Mm -hmm. Two thirds of the city cost is people. Yep. Personnel. And we've added since two thousand three. Yeah. We've added 38 people. Yeah. Yeah. And they each cost, they don't get paid, but they cost 100 grand each. Yeah, the benefits. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot. That's 3.8 million yeah. a year. Yeah. And prior to this term, the previous term, taxes went up roughly yeah. the same. So are you going to cut the fire department or the street cleaners or the nope. river corps? I'm going to have a mayor's turnaround team, mm -hmm. who, which are a combination of current employees and past employees and let them go through and determine who goes. Charlie Kornfeld would help on that. Whoever. Yeah. There'll be a, it won't be me deciding, but we're not, if we do downsizing, it will not be from the bottom up. It'll be top down. Yeah. What have you got? Six managers, assistant managers now about that? Yeah. So you could get by with four or five? Two, three. <laughs> so well, well, traditional downsizing in industry, which I've been through before, yeah. they always start, the boss has always decided to deal with the people they never yeah. see, because those are the easiest ones to get rid of. Yeah. I can handle getting rid of the people I see. Yeah. Now, you can do it by attrition, or you can do it by uh, lawyers <coughs> and, uh, and layoffs. Well, y we have a lot of people who are probably ready to retire, yeah, plus we've got a lot of empty spots. Yeah. So let's start with those. I mean, we're, yeah, it's not fun. No. But it's got to happen. Yeah. But it's also got to be permanent. Yeah. If you downsize... Yeah. You go down and you don't, you don't rehire now, to those positions? I recently saw a clipping, and as you can see, I collect them, where Campbell River's administrative cost as a percentage is actually pretty it's good. It's not bad. Yeah. yeah. But our taxes are going up huge. Yeah. Like, we, we'll beat most places for taxes going up, and we got to reverse this. we got a lot yeah. of seniors who, whose pensions don't go up. Yes. So I'll give you a, li you want a little hint. Yeah. First of all, right in, in electioneering, right now seniors at 65 get a bonus on their homeowner grant against their school taxes to reward them for being 65. How about out of respect when they turn 80, we double that. The city doubles it. Hmm. And at 85, if you're still in your house, we give it again. Because those poor folks, their pensions aren't going up. And they've already paid for dozens of kids to go to yeah, school. They built the place. Right. So out of respect, let's lower their costs to, yeah. and give them a reward for still being in their house. Yeah. Now there's a headline here, uh, Tough Decisions and Buying Selling Assets, Neil Cameron column in the Courier of April the 11th. Oh, yeah. um, and I know from chatting with you a bit that the city has a pretty large inventory of real estate. Yep. How much can you save from the cuts by selling surplus assets and are they truly surplus? Uh, a lot of them are probably surplus, but you're not going to get much money right now for them. Yeah. And those cuts are a one-time saving. Yeah, I, you got to do the cuts that save you every year. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's we got to yeah. and we got to find a way to keep businesses on city-owned yeah. land, yeah. not have the the Walmart, Home Depot on situation vacation. repeat again. Yeah, yeah. the natives did well. Yeah. <laughs> if I hand it to them, yeah, they did well. But we got to start having some of the big box stores on our yeah. taxation zone. Yeah, and Campbell Indian Band does pay seventy-two point four percent city tax. It's huh. not like it's free. Yeah. They are paying. Yeah. They're one of the biggest, if not the biggest, taxpayer. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's yeah. not free. Yeah. But it's a loss. Yeah. Um, the uh, MMBC blue box thing. The box. Can, can you <laughs> give us a two minute? Because we only got about five minutes. Okay. Left. So when MMBC was originally introduced to us at the SRD meetings. Multi material. Multi mix multi material British Columbia. Okay. The deal was it was supposed to cover all the costs of collecting are mixed materials. And then they said, well, it's 98%. Well, now Intera, who collects our material, now our garbage, is yeah. saying the, the volume is going to go down so much, we need a subsidy of about $5 a month per household to cover what we're losing in volume by MMBC taking it as huh. recycle. So now we're down to like 72% coverage. Well, I thought I saw some report. It's like, folks, don't worry. It's not going to change very much. Yeah, well, it is. It's still, I mean, it's $5 a month, right? Yeah. But it's not right. Yeah. I had, I don't understand what they're trying to fix. Yeah. Like the blue box, I've never had a person complain about the blue box other than yeah. they want two or something, right? But well, I've, I've never heard of a problem. There's a provincial-wide issue that 
uh, I don't understand, which is partly why I asked the question. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't get it. I cannot understand from all yeah. the discussion what are they trying to fix. Yeah. And it, it's not just our community. Yeah. It's I'm going to the mayor's caucus in Cranbrook next week. It's oh. going to be really interesting to hear what other mayors yes, are saying. Yes, because this is a province wide. This is another Gordon Campbell thing. I oh, think. yeah. And yeah. the other thing, there's a mayor's Facebook page that's closed that all the mayors talk on. Oh, really? So I get to see what the other mayors are all saying. Huh. If I go on with a question, I'll get 17 answers. And when I do yeah. stuff that seems Actually, outrageous. You posted our first show on that, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I did. And <laughs> there you know were so what? many they, hits on that. And I put our <laughs> homeless shelter and all that stuff on there. But yeah. if, you, if I go on and ask, I'll get 17 answers from experienced mayors yeah. through the whole province. The, yeah. the mayor of Prince George, Sherry Green, is excellent. Yeah. She answers right away. So when I do stuff that looks outrageous, I've yeah. already tested it. Yeah. The guy in Saanich has been around forever, too. Yeah. Yeah. Frank. Yeah. Yeah. Um, here's one. Compost <coughs> Education Center cut short-sighted. This is from 2013, November. Yep. Um, you got blamed for that, and then area this, uh, the SRD's road to the rescue. Is, is that a fair summary? Uh, yep, but that's costing everybody more money. Okay. Do you need to be trained on how to pile grass in a heap to let it rot? Well, I'm pretty dumb. You're pretty dumb? Yeah. Yep. Well, <laughs> if, you, if you want to lower costs, you can't keep doing everything. Yeah. And that center has been running for 20 years, and we all know about ladybugs. We don't need to be retrained. Yeah. But that whole thing of the SRD was a certain person on council wanting to be the chair of the SRD, and knew I wouldn't vote for it. it had nothing to do with recycle or anything. Yeah, yeah. They Nonsense. Used that this is this is small town. Text, this is a small town politics. Yeah. Like it was no. a, it's a scam. Okay. <laughs> okay. I wish we had an hour. We can you know keep funny? this going. <laughs> Right now, I don't mind not going there. I save 20 hours a month to do play and do other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, why don't you update your message on the uh, city's website? It's got references that have been there since 2012. My message? Yeah. I don't even bother ever reading it. Well, I read it last <laughs> night looking for something. Oh, I see. And it's, and it's, it's the and same it's, one. I'll have and to it was, it. It, Yeah, it was forward looking for your next three years. Yep. Well, the next election is almost a rerun of last election. Yeah. Most of what I said last time still applies. But you're still, you're, this time you're going to have a better team behind you, I think. Yeah, I've got too many people wanting to run. Oh, that's the a nice is problem. The problem is not enough of them are electable. Oh. And I tell people, if you don't know a thousand people, don't even try. Huh. You may be the best guy in the world, yeah. but name recognition yeah. is important. Are you going to incorporate a slate, like a name and stuff? Uh, no, we're no. going to, I'll probably endorse people. Okay. But it's... Uh, we definitely still need to make yeah. the same changes I was yeah. mentioning last time. Yeah. Otherwise, we're going to have a, just a rerun of yeah. what we got. Speaking of changes, and we got very little time left, the departure of Lyle Jelena. How do you feel? Of, you want to? Great for him. He, yeah. he, he's been wanting to get to the next step up. Okay. It helps his pension. He's getting close to retirement. Yeah. He's he's uh, tried it for other jobs, and this one's a really good one. Yeah. And it was time for a change. Like yeah. the RCMP changed their leadership oh, and moved okay. them around. So it was time for him to go back to Alberta, where he came from. Yeah. But I think he's coming back here to retire. He was pretty clear he's coming back. Oh, that's good. Like, I felt that he did a really good job for Lyle's the city in excellent. terms of the like the the graffiti and uh, the Campbellton and and he participated in Canada Day and all these things, yeah, yeah. even as a volunteer. Yeah. He's just a great guy, yeah. and his troop really really yeah. like him. Okay, he's a good guy. He'll well, do he'll do very well. But yeah. And he's in Red Deer. Yeah. So well, it's I thought it was something else, but anyway, well. Um, Let's see. It, well, I don't know if we can squeeze it in. Is there anything I missed? Um, nope. Nope. Okay, good. There he is. Wrap it up. I'm getting the signal. So thank you for watching Talk About here on Shaw. My name is John Twig. Our guest was Mayor Walter Jakeway. It probably says that under the screen. And thank you, volunteers. Thank you, Chaz. And thank you, Shaw, for producing Talk About. We are on YouTube, too. Mm -hmm.